Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a beautiful Christmas dinner menu for six that is easy, delicious, and affordable. And the best part is it will not take you all week in the kitchen, I promise. And at the end of the episode, I'm also gonna give you my game plan for how to tackle the prep. First up, let's talk about the appetizers. I wanted to give you two ideas, depending on how you were feeling. One that's super simple and comes together in a snap, and the other that takes a little bit of time, but you can make it ahead of time and look super beautiful and elegant. So now for the easy one. The first thing you're gonna do is get some ciabatta bread. So if you're only making a dinner for six people, you may not wanna go out and get a full loaf of ciabatta. I would just actually get two of the ciabatta sandwich rolls. You can buy them by the piece and it's much more affordable. So what you wanna do is slice your ciabatta just into thin slices, about a quarter of an inch thick. And for six people, I think two rolls really does the trick. And you don't want people filling up too much on the appetizers when you see what's coming. <laughs> Then you just wanna place them on a baking sheet and brush each one with a little bit of olive oil. Pop these under the broiler just until they're nice and toasted and golden brown. Then you're gonna take a large log of goat cheese. Then here's the real easy part. You're gonna go out and get a jar of sun-dried tomatoes in oil that have already been sliced. And then you are just going to drizzle these sun-dried tomatoes all over the goat cheese. And don't worry if it drips down the side of the log. That's actually part of its charm. <laughs> And the other thing I like to do is add a little bit of fresh thyme. It's a great flavor combination against the sun-dried tomatoes and the goat cheese. Then all you have to do is add the toast. And not only is this delicious, but it also looks so Christmassy too. Now when it comes to Christmas, I love to incorporate a little bit of smoked salmon into the menu because I think it's so festive. And there's just something about a little bite of smoked salmon to set the party off right. So you're first gonna begin by adding 12 ounces of softened cream cheese into a mixer. And then you're also gonna add one cup of heavy cream. This is to lighten the cream cheese. And if you've ever made cream cheese frosting, that's the texture we're going for. <laughs> then we're also gonna add 2 thirds cup of diced salmon. Do make sure that you've cut the salmon into small little diced pieces because we're ultimately going to pipe this out in a star tip and you wanna make sure that the salmon can actually fit through it. <laughs> Then for a little bite and crunch, we're going to add one tablespoon of diced shallots. Then you wanna add two teaspoons of diced capers. Again, making sure that you've chopped them up really well so they fit through our piping bag. And then a tablespoon of fresh dill. And then we're also gonna add two teaspoons of fresh lemon sauce. There, and then we can just whip this all up until combined. Then the next thing you wanna do is fit a pastry bag with a star tip. So use one that's a little bit on the wider side, meaning the opening is a little bit wider. That will allow all of the mix-ins that we put into our mousse to fit through. Then we're gonna work with a English cucumber. I like the English cucumbers since they don't have a lot of seeds inside them. They also don't have that waxy finish that we put on the regular cucumbers to preserve them. <laughs> so they have two things going for them. And then we are just gonna slice them into about a quarter inch slices. And then you can go ahead and pipe your mousse. I think a healthy dollop per cucumber is the way to go. There you have it. Now for the main course. Now I know for many of us, beef can be traditional for Christmas dinner, but a few weeks back I did a poll on my community tab and 36% of you guys wanted a budget-friendly chicken dinner. So we're gonna be making a traditional bouche à la reine, which is a fantastic French dish that's normally made with chicken and mushrooms. A couple years ago though, I did a twist on this recipe with lobster. So if you were someone who voted for seafood and you haven't seen that recipe, I'll link to it below because this would be fantastic with lobster too. So we're gonna be working with bone-on, skin-on chicken breasts. So go ahead and put it on a sheet pan, and we are gonna roast this chicken at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 to 45 minutes, just until the chicken is cooked through. Okay, then the next thing we wanna do is get our mushrooms going. So in a large skillet, you wanna heat some butter in the pan. Then once your butter is nice and foamy, then you can go ahead and add a third of a cup of minced shallots. Then we're also gonna add eight ounces of mushrooms. In they go. And then you just wanna cook the mushrooms down until they're nice and wilted and they begin to release their juice. Then you can season with a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And then we're also gonna add two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. And you can see we have all of this delicious brown bit in the pan here that is full of all kinds of flavor. And we just wanna deglaze our pan with a quarter cup of a dry white wine. And now we also wanna add just two teaspoons of freshly minced thyme. 
and then continue to cook the mushrooms until this sauce has been reduced by about a third. Then the next step is to create our bechamel sauce. So in a deeper skillet, because we're gonna be adding the mushrooms back in and the chicken, we wanna add three tablespoons of butter. Then once the butter is nice and foamy, you can go ahead and add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and then give it a whisk and allow it to cook for a minute or two just to cook off the taste of the flour. And then we're also gonna add two cups of just whole milk. And it goes. And then you wanna keep this on a medium flame and allow it to simmer. And as it simmers, that flour will start to activate and the whole thing will start to thicken. I actually make sure I don't thicken it too much because I usually make this the day ahead. And so if you're making this the day ahead and it sits in the fridge, it will thicken up. You can always thin it when you reheat it with a little bit of milk or chicken broth. Okay, now time to add our garlic. Three quarters teaspoon of salt and some freshly cracked pepper. There. And then at this stage, you wanna add back in the mushrooms. Mm, these look so delicious. Then we're gonna add in our shredded chicken that you can just shred off the bone with two forks. There, and now our sauce is pretty much ready to go. Allow it to cool down and then you can transfer it to a container and pop in the fridge. Okay, now for the puff pastry. So you wanna roll out two sheets like this on a floured surface, and then using something that's probably about four inches in size, I'm just using a ramekin, this is a one cup ramekin, you wanna create little circles. Now, this does work better if your puff pastry is a little bit almost in between frozen and chilled, not totally frozen because it'll crack, but not too soft. It'll just make it easier to cut out the circles. Then we're gonna use the scraps to cut out a little decorative ornament. I'm using a Christmas tree, but you could also use a star, a little mitten, a stocking, whatever you have. Then you wanna put a little egg wash on each one. I would even lift up the tree and make sure you get underneath it, just so that it'll stick. The only thing that I would not do is get too close to the edge, because if you get too close to the edge of the puff pastry, it will prevent it from puffing up. So it's important to just stay on the top and the tree. <laughs> and then we're gonna put these in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven, just until they're risen and golden brown and beautifully puffed. Then to serve with the bouche à la reine, I really love to do a Provençal style tomato because they work really well with the richness of the cream sauce. And then in addition to that, another super easy side dish is some roasted asparagus. And we're gonna get to that in a minute. Make sure you get just a medium sized tomato. You don't want anything too big or too small. And you can go ahead and save these tops. They're great inside of a tomato sauce or I pop them in my slow cooker when I'm making my slow cooker tacos, which is a good recipe too. Then we also wanna core the tomatoes. So I use a melon baller because I think it is the easiest way to go. And really just one turn of the melon baller is all you need. Then we can just place these on a little mini sheet pan. I like to use the quarter sheet pan because that way we can get two pans in together, which is what we're gonna need when we actually go to roast our asparagus. Then the breadcrumb mixture is really easy. You're just gonna take three tablespoons of panko breadcrumb. I like the panko because I find that they just have a little bit better texture, but you could also use regular breadcrumbs or mix the two if you had both. Then I'm also gonna add a half a teaspoon of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then a good pinch of herbs to Provence. If you don't have herbs to Provence, you could also use dried basil, dried thyme. Then we're just gonna give that a mix. And that's all there is to it. And then you're just gonna fill each of the tomatoes with the breadcrumb mixture. How about a teaspoon or so does the trick. There you go. Then they're gonna go in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 to 20 minutes, just until they're nice and soft and tender and the breadcrumbs look nice and golden brown on top. So to prep the asparagus, after you give them a rinse, make sure that you dry them off with a dish towel because we want them to kind of roast and not steam up. You'll get better sort of coloring and texture if they're dry. And then the only other thing you wanna to do to the asparagus is just cut off the ends. You see that real like woodsy part? That isn't the best texture to eat. So you just wanna slice that off, about a half an inch or so. There, then we can transfer our asparagus to a sheet pan. You can go ahead and just drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and then season with a little salt and pepper to taste. And that's all you have to do. And then you can just give them a shake to get all that olive oil and salt and pepper combined and it'll save you a bowl to clean. Then you wanna place these in the oven at the last 10 minutes of cooking time for the tomatoes and that's all it takes. Then to split the puff pastry in two pieces, the best thing to do is actually use your hands. You can find where the actual natural cracks are and just pull it apart. 
you'll get a much cleaner cut that way than if you try to use a knife. This looks so delicious. Look at that. You've got the mushrooms, we have the chicken, and you can put the little puff pastry with your Christmas tree on top. How delicious does that look? Now for dessert. I think we end up spending a lot of time when thinking about holiday menus, planning the flavors and making sure that everything is balanced, which is good. But I think equally important is planning the prep. So kind of balancing out the amount of work you have to do. So we just spent a good amount of work putting our main course together. So dessert really should be a breeze. Now the best part about this idea is that you will be able to serve sophisticated, delicious ice creams that will feel like they're homemade, but really we're gonna use store-bought ice cream and mix in instead. So for our Christmas menu, I thought it would be fun to do two different flavors. A fun and festive eggnog flavor, and then a rich and decadent chocolate hazelnut crunch ice cream. <laughs> and the two of them together is just so fantastic. Now I'm gonna be using my KitchenAid mixer just because it's easy, but if you do not have an electric mixer, not a problem. You can do this with just a bowl and a spoon. So I have some very softened vanilla ice cream here. I'm using a one and a half quart, so I think that's good for about six people. Now, very important, do not throw away the container or the lid. We are gonna use this in a minute. Okay, and then to create our eggnog flavor, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg and a teaspoon of rum extract. Now, I really love the rum extract because I find you get a lot more flavor of the rum without kind of that boozy aftertaste. And then you're just gonna beat it up. You just want it smooth. You don't wanna take it too far where it starts to liquefy. So store-bought ice cream has a lot of air whipped into it, so we don't wanna lose that volume. We just wanna combine the flavors. There, then all we have to do is transfer the ice cream back into the container. <laughs> so we don't need any fancy ice cream container. We can just put it right back in. And you do wanna freeze this for at least 24 hours before serving it, but that's great, because that means you can get your dessert done way in advance. Okay, then for our chocolate hazelnut crunch ice cream, we're gonna get some help from some chocolate. So for the hazelnut crunch, you're just gonna go out and get a four ounce bar of milk chocolate that has hazelnuts in it. It's so much easier because there's no hazelnuts to roast, no hazelnuts to peel. It's already in the chocolate and pretty much chopped up. So we're gonna chop that. And then who can resist a Toblerone chocolate bar, right? I don't know why, but there's something about almond nougat that just reminds me of Christmas time. So you just wanna chop the chocolate until it's in little tiny shards. And it's really hard not to do this. <laughs> and then we are gonna mix this into just a plain chocolate ice cream base. And then add the chocolate. Go ahead and beat it up just until it's combined. Don't take it too far because again, we don't want it to deflate and we don't want to crush the chocolate too much. Then you can transfer your new ice cream into its original container. <laughs> Look at that, it is so delicious. And then you can pop this one in the freezer overnight. Now to serve your ice cream, you have a couple of ways you could go. I think it's really fun and festive to serve ice cream in a footed glass that you can see through. It just makes everything all the more festive and fancy. My personal favorite is a nice martini glass, or you could also do a goblet, that would be nice, or a margarita glass works as well, or another favorite of mine would be a little vintage champagne coupe. And because we're putting these in dainty glasses, I usually do one scoop. <laughs> you can always offer seconds. Then of course, our delicious chocolate hazelnut crunch, yum. If you wanna add a little extra flourish, you can grate some bittersweet chocolate with a potato peeler and it'll make these really beautiful shards. And then for the little star cookies, you can use my sugar cookie recipe that I shared with you last weekend and just use a star cookie cutter or you absolutely could use a store-bought cookie. Okay, if you would like to make my Christmas menu, here's your game plan. Three days before, you can prep your dessert. So make your ice creams, put them back into the containers and freeze. That way they are all ready to go when it comes time to serve. You can also make the cookie dough for the sugar cookie start. Two days before, you can make your puff pastry rounds, cut out your little ornaments and pop on top. Cover the whole thing with aluminum foil and pop in the fridge or freezer. But don't brush on the egg wash just yet. You're gonna do that right before you bake. Then the day before, you can roast your chicken breast. While that's roasting, you can prepare your mushrooms, make the bechamel sauce, add your chicken in, allow the sauce to cool, and then transfer it to a container and pop it in your fridge. You can also prepare the tomatoes and the asparagus. Put them on their mini trays 
and pop them in the fridge. If you're going the route of the salmon mousse, you can prepare that a day ahead, transfer it to a pastry bag, and refrigerate overnight. Then the day of, after you've opened up presents, had your brunch, and there's kind of that lull between Christmas morning and Christmas dinner, you can bake the sugar cookies. And then once they're cooled, transfer to a container and allow them to sit out at room temperature. Okay, two hours before you're ready to serve dinner, you can brush those puff pastry rounds with your egg wash, place them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes. Once they're done, allow them to sit out on your cooktop until they cool, and then place them in a safe place uncovered until ready to serve. You don't wanna cover them because condensation can build up and turn your crispy puff pastry into soggy, chewy puff pastry. <laughs> Not a good look. An hour and a half before you're ready to serve dinner, you can prep your appetizers, you can pipe out your little salmon bites if you're making the mousse. And then 30 minutes before you plan to serve dinner, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, place the tomatoes in, set the timer for 10 minutes. When the timer goes off, put in the asparagus and set it for another 10 minutes. Start to reheat your sauce and put it on a nice simmer. And then enlist a family member to help you start to split apart the puff pastry. You can plate the vegetables, and then all there's left to do is just spoon in that delicious sauce into each of your little puff pastry rounds. Then sit down to a lovely Christmas dinner. Rest assured that dessert is all ready to go, and all you have to do is serve it. I love that feeling. <laughs> that is the best. Then scoop out the ice cream and add the cookie on top. And there you have it, a fantastic Christmas menu that I know that everybody is gonna love. I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. Share your photos with me on Instagram. I always love to see your successes. All right, you guys, and I'll see you back here next week when we're gonna tackle a really delicious, tasty treat for Christmas morning. I'll see you then.